I started to notice women who were in my practice behind closed doors would tell me stories that they wouldn't say in front of their family. And the stories went something like, I'm depressed, um, I'm angry, I'm not sleeping, I don't like the life that I have built, and I don't know how to get out of it, and I'm starting to get suicidal thoughts. And these women on paper had amazing lives. And so there were so many of them that told me that, that I started to unwind like, okay, what's going on neurochemically here? And that's when I found a statistic that showed that between 45, the ages of 45 and 55, that decade is the most popular time for a woman to kill herself. Most common, I should say, popular is a horrible word to use, but is the most common time. And then I saw another statistic that said, after 40, 70% of divorces are initiated by women. And then I found another statistic that said, if a woman is lucky, she'll spend 42.5% of her life without a reproductive system, post-reproductively. And when I started to put those three together, I was like, some, it's like an awakening. There's an awakening that's happening to women in this process, and we need to put language to it because there's the, nothing the human body does it by mistake ever. So if women were created to live 40, over 40% 40 of our lives without a major organ system working, there's a reason for that. And that's what dove me into just looking at how can I look at this from as many different angles as possible? Because I didn't want to just look at it from one angle. I wanted to really dive into it and go, what happens to women at this moment? And I think what we're seeing is that there's not a lot of reverence in our culture for rites of passage. And women are incredibly scared of becoming invisible because the culture has taught women, if you're gray, if you wrinkle, if you're not the perfect size, then you're not worthy. And yet the aging process is providing more wrinkles, more gray hair. A lot of women gain weight through the process. So does that mean we don't listen to her anymore? So those were the kind of questions and thought process that I wanted to, what's going on here? And, and, and it, honestly, like in full, full authenticity, like I think that the patriarchal culture is scared of the power of postmenopausal women. Because, and of women in general. And so there is this sort of understanding that if we create a word like anti aging and we create an industry around anti aging, like we hate aging so much, we had to put anti in front of it, that we could keep her hooked in to a, a belief system that keeps her tethered to her external purpose or her external look. Whereas what I think needs to happen and what I discovered in this research is that this is an opportunity for a woman to understand herself and to get to know her own internal purpose on her terms, not on what everybody else is saying. So when I wanted to understand, I just boiled it down to one single statement, which is what's the purpose of menopause? Like, why has this process happened? And so when I looked at it through a neuroscience lens, um, I've just stumbled upon Lisa Moscone's work, which you, you probably had her on your podcast. Oh, yeah. So she's, you know, she's a scientist and she has been looking at female brains. And what she discovered is that in times of mass hormonal changes, the female brain actually prunes itself. So it prunes away those neurons that it no longer needs in order to prepare itself for the next job that that woman's going to embark upon. So let's use puberty as an example. The neurons during puberty get pruned away that kept you attached to your parent or kept you attached to a caregiver and making room for new neurons that allow you to be independent. That makes sense. We all know that the teenagers start to push away from their parents as they move into puberty, and especially teenage girls. Postpartum, after pregnancy, same thing. When the, when the hormones crash, big hormonal change, the neurons that kept the woman knowing where her keys were, knowing how to handle the to-do list, those all go away. Because this, this, this research is really interesting to me that not Every species on the planet has a baby when it's born that's so dependent on a caregiver. 
If you look at like the chimpanzees and the and apes, which we're always comparing ourselves to, they those those baby chimps come out and they can climb trees and they can eat and they can live on their own, but humans can't do that. So the mom has to have incredible intuitive skills to be able to read the baby's clues. So the neurons that kept her attached to the logical key finding task list ideas, those go away so she can become highly intuitive so she knows what her baby needs. So if we just look at those two moments, like, wow, that's so cool. So then the third moment is menopause. This is the moment we're not giving enough credit to. The neurons that kept women addicted to people pleasing and women are, our brains are actually uh, neurochemically set up for people pleasing addiction. Those neurons go away and it makes room for neurons that put you in more of an independent individual state of mind. And when you compare that with an anthropological lens, a mystical lens, you look at societal pressures, you start to see that this woman's brain is rewiring itself to think on its own. It's built for leadership. It's built for uh, standing up for herself. It's built for speaking the truth. How many women, how many people have hung out with like a 65 year old woman? She'll tell you exactly what she thinks. And so there's a really cool process happening with the brain that is turning the brain into what I call a get out of jail free card for women. Because the way our culture is set up is it's set up for women to feel worthy if they're a certain size, to feel worthy if we perform in a certain way. And those are the neurons that go away. And now the woman's brain is turning into one where she's turning inward for worth and she's turning inward for happiness, not outward. And so I think what's happening is you have these women moving into their aging years and they're having to exercise a muscle that they've never exercised before and they've never been given permission to exercise it before. And there's so many, like I, I, I've I had so many great conversations with men who were raised by really amazing women. And um, what I hear a lot is what an incredible servant their mother was to the family. And how cool would it be to just turn to your mom at the point of menopause and be like, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Now, what are you going to do for yourself? When I started to put this through a menopause lens, I was like, okay, we've got women that are rageful. We've got women that are depressed. Anxiety is a number one uh, experience of women going through this process. And the message these women are getting is we read the HRT study wrong. Um, you've been gaslit in your doctor's office. You've been given antidepressants. And now we want to give you a different medication. We want to do something. You don't need to suffer. And I don't think women should suffer. But what I want to say is don't fall asleep to the moment. Mm. Because the depression might be that you did you built a life you don't love anymore. The anxiety might be that you're fearful of the future because it's not a future you want to step into. And the rage might be that you're really upset about a culture that told you you need to look a certain way, act a certain way, and be a certain way that took you away from your own authenticity. Express that. Like, understand that so that then you can dissolve the parts that no longer fit and You are left with what does fit and a butterfly can emerge. Mm. So when women are like, I had a hunch that, or men will do this too, but I had a hunch this was going to happen. That actually is a physiological state in your brain. So we don't want to ignore hunches. Women oftentimes get a hunch. It's time to change. It's time to stop doing everything for everybody else. It's time to become something new. And I think it's easy to go, oh, well, that's nice and woo-woo and it's great that you that, that you feel called to, to change. But what we're not acknowledging is that there's a message from her body that is incongruent with what's going on in her environment. And I think this is why the women are killing themselves. This is the divorce, that there's a mismatch between the internal navigation system and the external environment. So the first step would be absolutely pay attention to those hunches because there's something there. Don't get rid of that. Second thing I would say is that as we age, it is truly a coming home to yourself. 
And when I mean yourself, that might be your little girl who the culture decided needed to behave differently. You get to be the one that protects her now. Bring her back and start to bring her back, her playfulness back into your life and take back the qualities of who you were. That's what your brain is designed for now. If you don't stand in your truth, if you don't start to do life the way you want it to be done, you will become invisible. And we don't need a billion women to become invisible. We need a billion women to stand up in their own uniqueness and speak what matters. That We've never seen that on the planet yet, where a billion women stand up and say, this is what I believe, this is what I, what I own as being myself, and how can I make an impact on the culture through my own certain identity. That's what menopause is meant for. 